point on which, even as the budget was being prepared, the Prime Minister was clear that we are not going to generate uh, resources by raising tax to meet the contingency which has arisen out of the corona. So very clearly uh, references to income tax uh, have to be in that context. However, there are certain kind of changes being made in the Income Tax Act which are largely focused on the issue of ease of doing business, compliance which uh, will have to be brought down because repeatedly uh, in the public domain you have a lot of uh, uh, thinkers, uh, think tanks and also observers of uh, Indian economy saying that the compliance burden on businesses is so big, uh, some even quoting in thousands which uh, may not be very close to the facts but uh, having gone through the uh, reports and also having spent some time on what are the ways in which we can simplify compliances, changes in this finance bill also pertain particularly referring to the Income Tax Act pertain to ease of doing business. There are some rate changes in the customs which are also being shown here. Uh, again in the customs uh, tariff act and the central excise and many others, ease of doing business is also kept in when we are trying to rationalize the uh, acts. In fact, during my budget speech, um, I had mentioned that from now, from 1st of April till October, we will be, till end of August, we will be looking at rationalizing the existing customs act and any duties which have been levied over the decades which are all lying there without a, a finding a, a closure date will all be put for public discussions and we shall continue with that exercise of rationalizing and simplifying customs. So even in this finance bill some of the aspects are beginning that exercise. So eventually we will hope to have a complete uh, structure for the customs which is going to be absolutely simple. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion on the agricultural infrastructure development uh, CES. In the la larger context of CESs per se, CES and surcharges being uh, charges levied by the central government which don't get devolved. So uh, certain concern has been uh, repeatedly said by very many members. I will address it particularly in the context of the Agricultural Infrastructure Development CES, which is very important in the context of wanting to create more infrastructure for agriculture and agriculture largely, particularly in the context of APMCs and marketing yards is a complete affair within the state governments. And therefore, even as a beginning, I would like to tell you that something which I said during the budget speech, I shall repeat even now, the AIDC, the Agricultural Infrastructure Development CES will have to go to the states because it is for improving the infrastructure in the APMCs. It is for the farm, farm yards to have better infrastructure. So the CES may be a CES which never gets devolved but it is a CES which eventually is for the purpose of improving infrastructure for agriculture and agriculture and the farm yards and the marketing yards being with the state government will have to go to the states only. So that uh, one uh, um, opening remark as regards the agricultural infrastructure development CES. Uh, there are in the finance bill a few new proposals which are being added which are very much in a, a minor nature but one thing which I want to highlight is the new proposal which is coming as tax exemption which is being given for the National Bank for financing infrastructure and development. Because this is a very important step that we are taking we want to have you all of you are aware uh, Madam Chairperson we had announced an infrastructure pipeline and that pipeline has already identified greenfield and brownfield projects, 7,000 of them and rapidly with the state governments we need to have them constructed, built and uh, some with private participation also. But for all of that we need resources to be raised, scheduled commercial banks should not be getting into long term uh, infrastructure funding because that is not core business for a bank. Banks should be lending short term and earning money out of it and the kind of risks that infrastructure investment require 
cannot be uh, faced by the commercial scheduled commercial banks and therefore there is a need felt to have a uh, development finance institution the bill is already introduced in this august house and for that we need to give some tax exemptions and that's where that is also being brought in here but instead of me uh, uh, elaborating on very many points i thought it was important for me because members have actually covered extensive areas uh, about which they have asked questions so in in the form of answering members who have raised the questions i think i will be able to cover majority of the issues which have been raised about the finance bill i'll start with the honorable member uh, shri amar singh ji who spoke on very many things uh, i'm grateful indeed uh, unusual and pardon me uh, shri bittu ji seated in front uh, taking care of the uh, opposition uh, i'd like to make a, a statement uh, it is made with a fairly objective heart it was very much uh, a pleasing experience to have a member from the opposition benches recognizing some of the good work done by this done i honestly do want to praise and put that on record that there is a member um, in the opposition particularly in the congress benches who went into the details of the finance bill who picked out uh, points on which they he thought appropriate action was taken timely action was taken although he did have points and i grant him that space although he did have points where he wanted the government to do better or could have done differently i'm quite happy to hear the criticism but i was also pleasantly surprised and for a change coming from the congress benches a recognition that the government is getting its act so thank you honorable member amar singh ji but on one point on which uh, you did raise uh, the question as to why should there be customs duty imposed on items like nut bolts and screws which are normally used in every household also on toys and so on uh, i thought it's fairly obvious particularly consider considering the fact that many of such items are being produced by msmes all through the country and india's msmes have got the capability to produce many of these items Punjab is quite famous for this kind of work toys shoes sports wears many of them are small units who are all doing it and as opposed to that absolutely thrown for pittance rate imports were coming in whose quality was inferior to those which are being manufactured in india whose safety standards particularly for toys the safety standards were pathetic and many of our not just me but even ministers before me in commerce had taken all kinds of steps to stop this poor quality poor in safety safety standards toys from coming in from you know where so we have applied our mind and looked at the final consumer goods which are being manufactured in india there are msmes who are manufacturing them and we didn't have to import them therefore on those units those items we have imposed a duty that has been a very carefully taken decision it is not supposed to be on raw materials which are coming for let us say msmes these are finished goods finished goods which are being made by msmes in india and therefore it wasn't as if we wanted to tax those goods which are not being produced in india which are necessary for us i move over to a point which shri mudun reddy from ysrcp raised about gst invoices penalties for those companies which um, have a, uh, you know fake gst invoice allegations and whose properties are being attached i want to make it absolutely clear on this and just not on this but on many of the issues which are being questioned on gst madam chairperson issues related to gst when they are being posed to the finance minister i take it on board i will work on them but the gst related matters are not ministry of finance matters they are the gst council matters in which many of the states all states finance ministers are members it's a collective decision of the council to take a decision and do it this way or do it that way and without the council's clearance no step is taken 
So it's not as if the finance minister sitting in the North Block says, right, go attach this property. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And therefore, we first of all, on everything to do with GST, I want to be absolutely sure it is a decision emanating out of the decision taken by the council. And with that said, I want to be uh, sure that I'm able to answer Sri Midun Radiji. It has been noticed that it is difficult to recover penalties levied on the persons who are involved in fake GST invoices. It's just becoming impossible. The proposed provision, which is what uh, the honorable member has referred to, would ensure collection of this penalty and would help in discouraging the practice of fake invoices. Further, this provision would be applicable for only those big fraud cases where the amount of fake invoice is two crores or more. It's not going to be even touching people who are faking lesser than that. So I'm only touching those fake invoices of two crores or more. So I want you, honorable member, to actually extend your helping hand by telling members out there in the businesses to say we are not touching everybody. But if you have a fake invoice allegation on you for over two crores or more, and we are not able to get even the penalty back, and the assets are sitting there of that person, as a result, the income of the government is coming down, fake is you know, spreading. How do you contain it? So I would want you as an honorable member to please go convince people that they don't need to be frightened if they had no fake allegations. <clears throat> Ma'am, uh, I absolutely don't have a, any issue with uh, action being taken on fraudsters, but I was only uh, referring to the issue of harassment on people related to the transaction, like chartered accountants or managers in the company. So any person who has done fraud needs to be brought to justice. But what I was talking about is, like, there should not be any harassment on the other people. So if it's done on the owners of the company, it's fine but not on the accountants, not on the managers, and not on the other things. Ma'am, we don't have a say in the GST council, but who else should we talk to, ma'am? You're the only person for us. <laughs> we have... My, my mic is not on. You don't else? have an access to the GST council? Uh, chairman, sir, I would like to tell the honorable member, the, state, yes, the finance we, minister of Andhra Pradesh is an honorable member of the GST council. You have it's any not, access it's to not it. that, ma'am. Where, as a parliament member, which other discussion can I raise this, ma'am? Okay. And you being the, there, I think you should influence the other people also to take a favorable decision. Andhra is just one state in 25, 26 states. So, as a, we have nobody else other than you to represent us there, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome to raise, but I'll also give my reply, which includes that your finance minister is also equally accessible and you should really. The other issue you raised was that uh, on the issue, sir, of the Finance Commission probably not incentivizing states which have performed well, particularly on criteria of population. I would like to submit through you, Chairperson, sir, that states, particularly on this fact that the last time the Finance Commission prepared its report, the 2011 census was used and uh, as a result now, because of the performance related index on population, particularly southern states, in your case you refer to AP, have suffered. I want to put it on record here to incentivize states who have enforced population control measures. 15th Finance Commission has provided a weightage of 12.5% for demographic performance. They've given a weightage. As per this criteria, therefore, states with lower fertility, some of the southern states, inclusive of Andhra Pradesh, states with lower fertility rate will get greater inter say state uh, share. AP has an inter say share of 6.635% in the demographic performance. Criteria compared to overall interstate share of 4.047%. So yours is much higher than the average. 
it may be mentioned that in the 14th Finance Commission period, overall share was 4.305%. So the Finance Commission has already provided a weightage of 12.5% of the demo for demographic performance. Under this criteria, states that have lower fertility rate will get higher share. For this component, particularly the subcomponent, AP has 6.635%. So that's been addressed uh, even by the Finance Commission. So, Vinod Ravit, uh, Vinay Krauji of Shiv Shena had ra raised quite a few uh, important points. Of course, on the petrol and diesel, the Agricultural Infrastructure Development uh, CES questions have been raised, which I'm broadly covering, which was already explained that this CES was brought in. I'm telling you on a broad note, customs duty. I sat through this exercise more than three times before the budget terms were finalized. The customs duty was brought down the cess was imposed for agricultural infrastructure development cess it was imposed far lesser than the quantum of the reduction in the customs duty so if 10 rupees of customs duty was brought down and a cess was imposed on it on a particular item it did not touch 10 it was stopped at 6 or 7 or some cases it was just 5 the principle being that eventually that particular importer of that particular product on whom the basic custom duty of 10 rupees was on will end up paying that much only or lesser but never more. So end incidence of that agricultural infrastructure development cess on that particular item is that much only or lesser but not more. So I want you to appreciate the principle with which we have gone ahead. Uh, much before I go over to talking about the GST, you also, Honorable Member Vinayak Raoji had also raised the new TCS provision, which imposes a tax for sale over 50 lakhs as being burdensome. The TCS is only at the rate of 0.1%. It's not even 1%, it's not even 0.5%. It is 0.1%. It applies only to those big taxpayers whose turnover is more than 10 crores in the year before. It was imposed last year in the Finance Act of 2020. It is not now, it was imposed even then. And it is intended to widen the tax net. Honorable Member Pinaki Mishra was voicing his concern, which is a concern of the entire house, which is a concern I have too. We need to widen the tax base. And TCS is never an additional tax. It is levied, but you can always reconcile with actually what you have to pay. So if you've got something less which has been paid, you can always adjust this. This is not an additional tax. It is a tax collected, but you can always adjust it to the tax due. So credit for tax collected is allowed and hence it is not an additional tax. So it's not actually a burden. I want to highlight that. Member Vinayak Raoji also raised question about vaccination, the burden on people who have to take it. You honorable member may be aware, vaccination even today in government hospitals is for free. Yeah. You, anybody who goes through the COVID and goes to the government hospital gets it for free. So there is no burden on the poor who have to go get vaccinated. It's not being charged. And the last of the points which member Vinayak Raut raised, which many other members also raised, bring petrol and diesel into GST. As I said, and uh, one other member, honorable member also said, the highest tax today on petrol and diesel, honorable chairperson, 
is in Maharashtra. Uh, Namne Trana ji mentioned it probably. So I'm not pointing out whether one state is more or less or whatever. The point is states also tax fuel, not just the center. And when the center taxes, it's part of, it's not a cess. So it's part of the devolvable amount. So if I collect 100 rupees out of taxing petrol or diesel, of the 100 rupees, 41% goes to the states. So everything that I tax will have to be also given, so long as, of course, it's not a cess or a surcharge. So fuel tax that the center does is shared with the states. But the long and short of it, center also taxes, state also tax. And if there is this concern, and rightly, rightly members have a concern about fuel tax, and why not come into DGST, I would honestly think, based on today's uh, discussion, Many of the states would be watching this and in the next GST council, if that discussion comes up, I'll be glad to have it on the agenda and discuss it. I have no issues. Let the states come and discuss it. It has to be taken as a call there. I move to the next issue where many, many members probably referred to it, but some members did say about the reduction in the reopening of cases, income tax cases. What was six years was brought down to three. So, there was also this confusion about whereas what was six year limit has now gone up to ten year limit. Members are conceding that where it was six years you brought it down to three which is good but where it was six years you took it up to ten. No, we have not increased the number of years for which the scrutiny or assessment survey can be done. What was six years was brought down to three. Already for ten years, when it can be opened up, we actually brought in a condition by saying only where up to 50 lakh of undisclosed income is in question and only in such cases will it have to be, will it, will it be opened and it can be opened for up to ten years. For that, even then, the opening can happen only with the approval of the principal, or principal commissioner. Otherwise, they cannot go open it. Two conditions, right? One is 50 lakh or more undisclosed income and if you have some proof in your hand, then you may open it. But even then, you will open it only after taking the approval of the principal commissioner. Otherwise, you can't touch it. So that is what has been done. So not take it to 10 years, but actually give relief for less than 50 lakhs, even if it's undisclosed. There is a great relief in that only for 50 lakhs and above, questionable undisclosed income, we are saying you could open it. So there's no uh, confusion there. Then again, for foreign assets reopening, there was time limit of 16 years, which has been reduced to three years. This must be restored to 16 years, was Honorable Member's comment. So the, my reply on that point is, for foreign undisclosed assets, the Black Money Act would be applicable and for action under that act, there is no time limit. So I can't raise it from 5 to 10 or 15 to 16 or anything. It is the Black Money Act which governs there. So Member Ritesh Pandey spoke about the equalization levy yeah. and he said uh, his tax on online transactions, it's an extra burden and discourages online tax, uh, transaction. This government is very much in favor of digital transactions. We will never do anything to undermine it. But yet, equalization levy is a tax which has been imposed to give level playing field between Indian businesses who pay tax in India and foreign e-commerce companies who do, not, who do business in India but do not pay any income tax here. So let's be clear, we are only trying through the equalization levy to treat everybody who is operating in India equally. And if they pay income tax here, the e-commerce companies which are foreign, if they pay income tax here, then the equalization levy is not applicable on them. 
Hence, there is no extra burden on any company. And then through the government amendment that I'm moving today, I intend to clarify that this equalization levy is not applicable on consideration for goods which are owned by Indian residents. Thus, the concern raised by the Honorable MP regarding extra burden would not be there at all. Member Supriya Sule, probably is she here? I can't see her. Oh, yes. Has raised several, several, several questions. I first of all want to address this question of 2 point lakh, 2.5 lakh, which is on the PF, employee contribution on the PF. I think this was responded to even during the budget discussion. I had said that this 2.5 lakh actually covers majority of the people who normally invest money here. They get tax concession. They don't have tax when they withdraw. So that is fully justified. But there was this 1% of people in the EPF contribution who were going up to 5 crores contribution also. Where is 2.5 lakh which is helpful to all the workers? But that which is being deposited as 5 crores, how many of them are there? Hardly 1%. And this 2.5 is covering majority up to 90, 92%, 93% of the people who are depositing and I don't think therefore this is going to affect the interest of the workers for whom that interest free, tax free, I mean interest, assured interest and tax free is provided under this scheme. So the limit has been kept, keeping in mind that small and medium taxpayers are not impacted by this step. Through the government am amendment that I'm bringing now, I intend to raise this limit to 5 lakh. There's one addition which I want you all to know about. This amount is now being raised to 5 lakhs in those cases and only in those cases where there is no contribution by the employer in that fund. So most often it is employee contribution and employer's contribution. But there are contributions which are only employee and no employer contribution is made in such cases that amount is raised to 5 lakhs. And then this question about ULIP, where insurance gets linked to the uh, unit, we have segregated that because we wanted to bring in parity for investment with mutual funds as, reg as related to the units also. So when units, which is also like mu uh, mutual fund related fund, and that gets linked up with insurance, we've tried giving a equal treatment. Honorable Member Supriya Sule also spoke about the long staple cotton. The delegation also has met me, but uh, I need to state some facts about cotton here, ma'am. Sorry, I'm taking a bit of time. Actually, cotton imports in this country, the duty was raised from nil to 10% some time ago. And there is some growing of even long staple cotton happening in India. So it's not as if it's completely without, uh, you know, we don't have long staple cotton and therefore taxing us will become uh, disruptive of the industry. No, it's not. And also the fact that long staple cotton is used for very few items of export. The delegation has met me. I'll try to see what I can do about it. But it is not as if we brought this without much of a thought or mind application. I just wanted to explain that to you, ma'am. Uh, 
you have also, Honorable Madam Supriya Sule has also raised this question about Defense Modernization Fund. The answer that I had given earlier is the answer I, I give you now. We had in principle agreed to it, but no particular details have been worked on it. it if, if the Finance Commission has not recommended a certain formula, the fear that it might be imposed on the states is not well founded at all. We have not taken a call as yet any case. Uh, yes, I think I found the cotton related inputs. The import data which we have reveals that all kind of cotton is getting imported in India from large number of countries outside and it is not true that only one particular kind of cotton, which is the extra long staple cotton, which is being imported. That's not true at all. You can't distinguish long staple from short staple cotton because they don't have two edges and different coats. India is producing good quantity of cotton, including certain quantities of extra long fiber cotton. Imposition of cotton shall, or duty on cotton shall provide much relief for the farmers, which I have explained to you earlier. Member Hasnain Masudi ji, 74% of insurance, 74% uh, opening up or lifting the ceiling of FDI in insurance will help private insurance. Because they are out there in the big numbers, I explained that yesterday. They are running short of resources. They don't have enough money in the market to be raised for meeting their developmental expenditure. So that is more towards those private insurers who have come into this country post-2015. The other information is LIC. I got the impression, correct me if I'm wrong, that you tried um, bringing in LIC into that debate. LIC's IPO is for retail investors in India to buy it. In, in India, retail Indian citizens having a share in LIC is what the IPO is for. That and the FDI are totally different subjects. In fact, yesterday I kept saying, yesterday's FDI related response and the bill had nothing to do with LIC at all. So I want to highlight the fact that they are two different issues. And also in one thing which again I want to repeat in the context of uh, Honorable Member Masudi raising issues here, the government through the budget has announced a strategic uh, sector policy through the policy of public sector enterprises. Financial in companies, insurance companies and banks are all recognized as being part of the strategic sector where the public sector enterprise presence will continue. Public sector enterprises will still be there because bare minimum presence at least of public sector will be in those sectors which have been identified as strategic sectors. Of course for rationalizing, we may amalgamate them. Of course after am amalgamating so that they get the scale, there may be one or two who may not be able to amalgamate. We'll have to see how this investment can work on them. So strategic sector includes insurance, includes financial uh, institutions like banks and so on. Uh, I'm almost coming to the end so that members know that my reply is not for too long. Honorable Chairman, you've been very kind. You gave me a lot of time. Um, I just want to highlight the fact which I did say earlier. Many MPs have raised issues related to GST. There are frequent changes in the GST law and procedures, imposition of late fee, provisions like attachment of property and so on. I just want to reiterate the fact that the changes in GST law, procedure, rates are all decided at the GST council. It's not just me. The, these recommendations are made by the council. And after extensive discussions, only then uh, and detailed examination of the recommendations are done through the various committees which are in the GST Council. So it is, uh, I think, uh, important to take into consideration that the GST decisions 
are very clearly taken by the council and not the finance ministry. Minority of S, there were very many members who said, no, 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 this is nothing to do with the finance bill, but the budget. At that time also I answered this question, but this seems to be a point which gets repeated. I want to explain it. The allocation for minority affairs has not come down. Let's be clear, please. 1920, the actuals for minority affairs was 4,431.65 crores. And what is it in the BE now? 4,810.77 crores. So it's not come down. The BE in 2021 may have been 5,029. But based on the utilization, the RE is only 4,005 rupees only, 5 crores only, just 4,000 crores. And even over that, I've given 4,810. So let's have this comparison with a bit more uh, details looked into. Uh, I'm not getting to the detail of which state has dues from the GST council. Every state. Honorable Chairperson, sir, if you just allow me three data which I can read out so that honorable members who come from the various different states are informed. Sir, Honorable Chairperson, sir, GST compensation, because it interests all members, I would like to just say this as my concluding. GST compensation due from April 20 to January 21. April 20 to January 21, 2,17,844 crores. Back-to-back -back loan released to states to meet compensation shortfall, 1,10,208 crores. Compensation to be released from compensation fund in March 2021, which is this month before the end of this month is 30,000 crores. So compensation likely due to states and urine territories in the financial year 2020-2021 is 77,636. So let this be in the back of our minds. The breakdown by states is with me. There were particularly loud calls for Maharashtra I would like to say the GST compensation pending to be released to the states list which I have read out for the total. Now I am just telling for Maharashtra, I am not saying for the other states. Maharashtra, 32,295, that is the compensation due from April 20 to January 21. 11,977 crores have been released to the state of Maharashtra through special borrowing to meet the short release of GST compensation. So that also to be taken on board. Sir, uh, last was uh, Sri Pinaki Mishra, who spoke about this investment. You don't have a record. Earlier, what you claimed, you didn't achieve. I fully concede in a year where your disinvestment was to be achieved, but when the markets were tepid, we couldn't move because uh, in the year 1920, there were also all kinds of uh, stress in the market. So I couldn't see a prospect of being able to successfully engage in disinvestment. So that year, the figures were not achieved. I am hopeful now because post Corona and even during Corona, we saw the way in which the market has been buoyant. So I am hopeful that I'll be able to achieve. On the tax base, you are right. We are trying to uh, simplify the returns and also simplify the filing procedures so that people are attracted towards getting on board and uh, uh, you know be compliant. Tax rates are also being brought down. Uh, tax disputes, I think uh, we have spoken quite a lot on it, are being settled through various uh, uh, schemes. 
uh, we shall continue in that mode. Some with Vivatse Vishwas dates are also being de uh, dealt with. Some of the compliances for the startups have also been extended. I think largely, there was one question uh, Honorable Member Amar Singh raised about agriculture cough amount ghata diya. No, I said this even on that day when I was replying. 10,000 crores come ho gaya hai. Kam nahi hua. Hum Bengal ko, West Bengal ko man mein rakhte huye 10,000 crore budget mein provision kar rakha tha. Bengal se kisan ka list nahi pauncha. Isi liye Bengal kisan ko paisa nahi mila. Wo amount waise ki waise pada hua hai. Isi liye wo, 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 dis, haa, kam nahi hua. Amount pada hi hua hai. So, so I want you to be clear. Uh, this one issue, Danish Ali ji, I've responded to you. Don't keep. Nay, आपके आवाज इतना भगवान की कृपा से तेज है मेरे से नहीं होता है आपको चिल्लाना equally चिल्लाना नहीं होता मेरे से. Sir, uh, honourable chairperson, sir. I want to, uh, on the issue of minority budget, I think, uh, member, Honorable Member Syed Imtiaz Jaleel raised an issue on minority budget. I have answered that. But one point on which I would actually like the Honorable Member to stand up, stand up for this house. He referred to, don't take only those reports which are in your favor. Because Moody's report was referred to by Hamari member uh, Kotakchi. And he referred to the Freedom Report freedom. and said, Nay, Nay, Uska bhi aap uh, sang, uh, Sangyan mein lena chahiye. Sangyan mein lake ke hi Ministry of External Affairs unko satik jawab diya hai. Freedom Report ka. Magar mein member ka madat chati hu ek vishay mein. Kam se kam wo Freedom Report wale ko jiska zikr aap idar kar rahe hai. उनको कह दीजिए भारत के नक्शा मैप जो गलत उन्होंने उनको उनके वेबसाइट में उनके रिपोर्ट में डाले उसको करेक्ट कर ले आप उसमें मदद करिए इस हाउस को इस हाउस को आप मदद करिए जिस फ्रीडम का जिक्र इधर कर रहे हैं नहीं आप बैठ जाइए रिक्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं नहीं नहीं आप जिस रिपोर्ट का कर रहे हैं इधर आप उनको कह दीजिए आप ऐसे क्यों मक्सा बना रहे हैं और जिस जिस थिंक टैंक ने हमारे नक्शा तक सही नहीं बनाते हैं उनको जिक्र आप इधर क्यों कर रहे हैं इस हाउस में कम से कम एक मत होना चाहिए थैंक यू चेयरमैन सर आई थिंक आई हैव रेस्पॉन्डेड टू मेजोरिटी के मेंबर्स आई विश द बिल पास चेयरमैन साहब थैंक्स फॉर काइंड वर्ड्स मैम जो आपने बोले हैं लेकिन ठीक है बहुत भाषण भी अच्छा था आवाज भी अच्छी थी लेकिन सारी दुनिया का हमारे देश के लोगों का ध्यान सिर्फ आपकी स्पीच पे पेट्रोल डीजल वो आपने टैक्सेस की बात की लेकिन सिलेंडर तो मैम कोई स्टेट टैक्स नहीं लगता सिलेंडर क्या करें महिलाएं क्या करें आपके खाली सिलेंडर को उसका रेट क्यों बढ़ाया उसके बारे में एक भी लाइन नहीं और बाकी जितने एमपी बैठे हैं ये तो गरीब एमपी हैं एमपी लैंड की बात दोनों चीजें सिलेंडर खाली पड़ा है सबके घर में गाड़ियां सब आम आदमी की गाड़ियां गैराज में लगी हैं स्कूटर थ्री व्हीलर लूना सब खड़े कर दिया आपने कहा से कर, बड़ी बड़ी बातें तो हम तब करेंगे जब आदमी का प्रश्न यह है कि विधेयक पर विचार किया जाए जो सदस्य इसके पक्ष में वो हाँ कहें जो सदस्य विरोध में वो ना कहे 